This is where it began. The Strait of Tehran is the east. To keep that lifeline open, to survive, Israel was forced into a war she did not seek. Six incredible days in June. Six days of heroism and sacrifice in Israel. And of a sharp and sudden understanding of the meaning of Israel, Jews throughout the world. The guns of the enemy were spiked. The blockade lifted. The unbelievable victory won. But the larger goal remains. Now as then, for Israel, for the Jewish people, the goal is peace. Jerusalem, a city under pressure, under siege, surrounded as all Israel was surrounded by troops, tanks, and planes, outnumbered in men and equipment, but strong in resolve and spirit. A city and a nation hoping for the best, but prepared at whatever cost to fight for its survival. As the crisis mounted, Hadassah prepared too. The medical center, built to heal and teach in hope for peace, was ready to meet the emergency of war. 1,800 beds and all needed services were on instant alert. Sandbags were in position in the lower floors of all buildings. June 5th, 1967. In the very first minutes of Jordan's attack, the medical center was hit. Fortunately, the damage was minor. Within the hour, the first military casualties arrived. The citadel you had built was ready. So were the surgeons you had trained. The supplies you had provided. The nurses you had educated. In 60 hours of fighting, old Jerusalem was taken. 60 hours and 1,000 casualties. 60 hours in which 19 surgeons working simultaneously in nine underground operating theaters worked around the clock, performing as many as 20 operations in a row. Sixty hours in which more than 300 critically wounded soldiers underwent surgery. All but four were saved. As Hadassah in Israel shared the work of binding up the wounds of war, more than a million dollars worth of linens, blankets and medical supplies poured into Hadassah's national office in New York and were shipped to Israel immediately. The casualties in Jerusalem were greatly increased by the order to safeguard the holy places of all three religions in the old city. These gallant men fought without air or artillery support. The goal is peace. For more than half a century, Hadassah's tradition has been to extend its healing hands to all who need those hands. It was not different even in the midst of war. Arab soldiers, wounded so seriously they were abandoned by their Jordanian comrades, were given the same care as the soldiers of Israel, with but a single difference. They were under military guard. This much was clear. Never again would they walk the walls of the old city, rifles in hand. To protect its citizens against sniper fire, 
Jerusalem was forced to build anti-sniper walls after the war of 1948. After 19 years and 60 hours, the walls came tumbling down. Where there had been an unnatural partition, a walling out of one people from another, the possibility of normalcy, of peace, of understanding, became a reality. Out of the shadows of hostility, a new and open unity emerged, and with it the possibility of peace in the city of peace. The Mandelbaum Gate, where once only diplomats and privileged tourists passed with special permission from Jordan to Israel, has become a busy intersection in a united city. The Welcome to Israel sign is no longer needed. It has become obsolete in a city no longer divided. Today the traffic moves freely in both directions. Old Jerusalem. For the people of Israel, it is once again the morning of the world. The cradle of its belief has been reclaimed. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its coming. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I remember thee not. If I set not Jerusalem above my chiefest joy. In 19 years there has been no more hopeful moment than that in which the Israelis and Jordanians mingled freely and unafraid in the narrow streets of a unified Jerusalem. Hopeful and challenging, for overnight 70,000 Arabs had been added to the Jewish population of 200,000. A challenge for Israel and Hadassah, for here where Hadassah began its work, the standards of health and sanitation must once again be raised. And the goal is peace. Within these walls, the prophetic vision of universal peace was first voiced. In the long history of the Jewish people, there have been few events more moving than the final reunion with the Western Wall, the remnants of our ancient temple. The Kotel Hamarabi, the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall. Jewish history is enshrined within these ancient stones. It penetrates each crevice. It reaches to the roots of the Jewish soul. The tears of generations have washed this holy wall. A people had come back to the cradle of its birth. It had renewed its link with the memories of its past. And through the centuries, through persecution and oppression and dispersion, the prayer, spoken with awe, with hope, with devotion, has been for peace, for lasting and enduring peace. For Hadassah, the reunification of Jerusalem has meant access to the great complex of the first medical center built on Mount Scopus. These buildings, isolated for 19 years, empty, used only as an Israeli strong point, will be transformed into a modern rehabilitation center. True to Hadassah's tradition, it will serve people of all faiths, creeds, and nationalities. Israeli policemen guarded the hospital complex for 19 years, never losing faith that it would be used again. The faith of those who built Mount Scopus is a legacy passed on to a new generation of Hadassah women. The evidence of their devotion will be restored 
it has been extended in the work of every Hadassah chapter. Their achievement will be renewed in a work of peace and healing. In these buildings, those who cannot walk will be taught to walk again. Those who cannot work with their hands will be taught to use their hands again. The hospital on Mount Scopus will again become a link with the Arab community surrounding it in the great humanitarian tradition of Henrietta Zold. If the day comes and this building is again filled with patients, let them remember those who watched over this place in the difficult years. They are remembered, they and others, as the buses again make their way up Mount Scopus, passing the spot where Dr. Chaim Yasky and 76 doctors, nurses and scientists were killed in 1948. Their mission was mercy. In the deepest sense, it was peace. On the slopes of Mount Herzl, they lie, row on row. Those who gave all that a people might live. Fathers, brothers, husbands, sons. What shall their monument be? How shall those who live because they died respond. For Hadassah, as for Israel, the battle is not six days long, or sixty. It is every day and forever. For this the Jewish people learned in June, the meaning of Israel. It is more than a center of Judaism. Its growth is the supreme test of Jewish existence. Throughout the world, they learned what Hadassah has known for more than half a century. But crisis can be met only by those who work and build when there is no crisis. Day by day, the healing hands of Hadassah reach toward health, toward growth, and a life of creativity. The goal is peace. Thank you.